U.S., about 33,000 people are killed on our roads every year. Uh, that's a big number and hard to kind of put in perspective. Uh, what that number is equivalent to is a 737 falling out of the sky five days a week. Uh, so when you think about it in that kind of proportion, it's actually some, you know, it's a, it's a real number that matters a lot. And worldwide, 1.2 million people are killed on the world's roads. And over the next 15 years, it's going to go from number eight to number four on the WHO's mortality list. So it's a huge problem. The one saving grace we have is that 94% of those accidents are caused by human error. And so we have an opportunity through uh, building software and systems that are going to pay attention 100% uh, of the time and going to be able to respond quickly to try and reduce those accident rates. If you think about kind of fundamental aspects of people's lives, getting around is one of those. And so if we can give transportation back to people who've lost it or the elderly who are you know, maybe feeling less comfortable about driving and give them the ability to get around every day, there's a huge opportunity now. And so when I say our project's about improving people's lives by transforming mobility, that's really what we mean, is that whole set of things from safety to improve mobility for everyone to kind of um, really, really lifting the floor on who can get around and how they can get around. When we develop our software, we test it in kind of three different buckets. One part is the on-road testing that you know, you've all heard about. So we do over, uh, over 10,000 miles of testing every week with our cars. So that's you know, approaching a human year of driving experience uh, on the vehicles every week. We also do a lot of simulation testing. We do over 3 million miles of testing and simulation every day, uh, which is really exciting for us. And then the third branch of our testing is what we call orange team testing, where we have folks that go out and think up kind of uh, diabolical scenarios. So this day it was, what are all the weird kind of pedestrians you could imagine? Uh, and so let's go have them wander around in front of the car and see what happens. As we were thinking about um, cars that are going to drive themselves, well, that means you don't have to drive it anymore. And so the experience in the vehicle should be different. And so we started to think about that, too. And so we developed these prototype vehicles. Uh, and part of their job was to understand how people are going to use the car. And part of them was to help us introduce the technology. And so we designed them to, to be friendly and kind of fit in the community. And of course, because they're designed for riding in, uh, they don't need steering wheels or brake pedals or gas pedals. Uh, and so the, the idea is you'll be able to get in them, tell them where you want to go, uh, they'll take you there and then get out. You, you effectively are moving people from being the helmsman to the captain of the ship, which we think is actually you know, empowering. The car starts by thinking about where it is, roughly. Uh, so it's looking at its, uh, its positioning system and, uh, and GPS system, and it gets a rough position estimate. And then uh, that does that map matching thing that I mentioned earlier to figure out very precisely where it is. And so now it knows what to expect and where, where it should be relative to the road. It's a better than 10 centimeter accuracy. And then we can look at what the car sees from the sensors. And so all the purple boxes here are other cars. Uh, this red thing up here is a bicycle. And then up here are three cones that it's detected. And so now in the instant, it kind of has a model of what the world around it looks like. Now that's great, but it turns out if you drive based on where everybody is right now, you're going to have a bad day. Uh, and so the car starts to be, has to be able to predict what's happening. So in this case, this pickup truck out here uh, is coming up to what we realize is a closed lane because it has those cones in front of it. So we anticipate that that pickup truck is going to make a left lane change. And so we can respond to that differently. And of course, we can't just do it for that one pickup truck. We have to think about all the vehicles on the road. And we're at 10 to 20 times per second, we're predicting their future motion, all of them, and then responding to that. The technology is now getting to the point where we're starting to see uh, the, the benefits that, that we think it can yield on the road. And the next steps are going to be starting to learn from the community and learn from people how they want to see this technology come into their daily lives and, and help them. And so we're, we're really excited about the progress. We're really excited about how the, the broader automotive community uh, is embracing this stuff and pushing it forward uh, pretty rapidly. And I think it's going to be an incredible you know, next five to 10 years as we see, I think, what will be the next big step in transportation.